Here's Vecha. Vecha moving it. Xander Vecha to the net. He scores! Vecha it in overtime! That sounds good. I think uh, I think we need more of that. Uh, it is 811 News Talk, Saga 960, Raw, Mike Richards. On a Tuesday, which, as you know, is Meet the Steelheads. And, boy, that was a, that's, it gets real tough from here on in. Like, every single game is a tough one. Not that it's not that way uh, through, you know, most of the year, but it's particularly tough, I think, at this point because, you know, you've gone through so much. And with the changes that uh, the boys have been through, um, it's really, really very interesting to see where they're at right now. And I believe for the first time, I don't think he was with us last year, Xander Vecchia. How are you doing, Xander? Uh, good. How are you? Now, can I say buongiorno? Come stai? Do you know what I'm talking about? I know the buongiorno. That's all I got, though, on the top. <laughs> because... Xander Vecchia, it's like you play for Milano or or or, or Ferenza. You know, it's I, like is your is your family not that Italian? I think I'm a bit whitewashed, to be honest. But. Uh, you're, you're you're a munchie cake. Is that, that's what you're telling me. So so, but but I got to tell you, that's an excellent name. That is, you know, if I'm I'm going into a bar and I'm lying to a woman, I'm probably using your name just so you know. If there's a weird phone call, it's coming from me. <laughs> Go for <laughs> it. Help me. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we always like to find out kind of, you know, basically where 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 people are from. And in your part of the world, if you're going up, kind of looking like where you you might want to play. So would would you have been uh, thinking about Windsor or, or or the London Knights, or you know, as you're growing up as a kid, where did you think you would end up, or where were you hoping that you'd go to as a kid? Uh, honestly, I was just hoping to play in in the O, but. I, I watch a, a majority of my games in Windsor and a majority of my games in London. So they're both pretty good places to play, and I couldn't be more happy to play either in one of, in either one of them. But I'm happy with the Steelheads too, so it doesn't matter. Well, you're, it, it's certainly great uh, being on that top line as well. And as you know, with uh, a lot of the new faces that have come in, I, I, I very often say a lot of your teammates that it, it feels like it was almost like two seasons. I mean, you had one season with some very substantial players, guys who are basically going to be pro. They go out, uh, a bunch of new guys come in, and and everyone everything's kind of worked out well in terms of those guys fitting in because the biggest thing that seems to be a constant year to year on the Steelheads is that you guys are pretty close, that you get along, that this is a tight team, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's uh, it was close before, and it's I, I think it's even closer now. Like, um. The, everybody's gelling like we're we're having a good time i the vibes are different in the room and i i i really enjoy being a part of it so and mike just mentioned it briefly there but you're playing on the top line you've i mean you had a good season you know the whole time but you really started to take off when you started playing with uh with hardy and mesa just what's it been like being able to play with those two guys uh, uh it's awesome i mean they're both really good players like hardy hardy's hardy he's got all our records in the in our franchise, so it's it's great to play with him and Misa. He's he's moving and grooving. He's like uh, you can't catch him, and I, I love I love giving it to him, and he, I bet he loves giving it to me. So it, whatever we're doing, it's working, and I'm happy to happy to do it with him. So if someone hasn't seen Xander Vecchia play, well, well, how would you describe how you play? What, what would someone? What are the words that you'd use that you hope someone would use in describing how Xander Vecchia plays? Um. Hard working, uh, fast, uh, not afraid, um, reliable. That, see, those, oh, well, those, those are all very good words. And, and I think sometimes when, you, when you're young and, and when you're sort of, you know, you, you, you find your own way, but you, you also think a certain way because of players that you sort of looked up to, who you admired growing up, like you, a pro hockey player. So for you, uh, who was that? What, what what did you look up to? Who did you want to be? I wanted to be uh, Pavel Datsuk. Oh. That was, <laughs> I, I I love watching his YouTube videos before games, getting me all all psyched up, and he's just what what he could do with the puck was amazing. I always I always wanted to be like that. So uh, good example. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's definitely a, a good guy to look up to. One thing we didn't realize in the in the broadcast team, but that your dad played in the OHL as well and played played for Windsor. So, what kind of advice has he given you? Is he talking to you after every game? Like, how does that kind of dynamic work? Uh, he, he's not talking to me as much after games. Like, he he's kind of letting me do my own thing. Like, he'll he'll be like, give me like a nod or something, like good job or or just a piece of advice that he wants to give me, but. He's. I've kind of. I've kind of. I'm kind of on my own with him in a sense in the OHL. But before I came into the OHL, he just he told me what kind of expect a little bit and uh, just some little tips here and there, like road trips or or just court in general, like uh, team, like the team rules and stuff. So it's he's helped but- us. But that's interesting, Xander. You know uh, something you bring up because when you're in like southwestern Ontario, you kind of you get used to. And I think you're what, Ridgetown? Is that where originally you're, you're from? Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot of driving. Like when you come from southwestern Ontario, you're just used to getting in the car. Going a couple of hours is just what you have to drive to. If you're going to London or you're going to Sarnia or you're going to Windsor, like you're just in the car all the time. But that was interesting. Your dad might have mentioned something so about road trips. Like what kind of things would he talk about? Because if you play for Windsor, like you're, you know, look, you're closer, obviously, when you got to go to the Michigan teams. But, you know, when you, we got to go to... When you got to go to the Sioux or, or Sudbury, I mean, that, that's those are long bus rides. So, how, what would he talk about in terms of travel? Uh, uh he, he loves snacks, so he always said to make sure to bring some snacks. You never go hungry. Um, bring a pillow. Try to sleep as much as you can because sometimes it might be hard. But uh, just and also just like enjoy the ride too. Like play some cards or just have a good conversation with the fellas and just simple things, but. He always just reminded me of them. No, it's, 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 I mean, it, it, they seem small, but you know, when someone's done it before, it's, it's great to get that advice. So I, I do have to ask, are you, are you a card shark? Do you take your players, uh, your, your friend's money? Is that what you do on the bus? Uh, no, I'm not much. I'm not much of a gambler, but I'll, I'll play, I'll play for, I'll play for, uh, for, for fun. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> off in my skills too, just yet. <laughs> But are there are there card games going on? Because I mean, you say card games. I feel like that might not be something that that, that people do as much on the bus now. Is that is that still a is that still a thing? I mean, we've done it a little bit. Uh, blackjack's the front runner, uh, but we we it depends on the ride. It depends how long it is because the majority of ours are like an hour or two. But when it was a bit longer, like probably this weekend, we'll probably bring out a deck of cards and uh, play a few rounds. So. Yeah, this weekend you can write a book. Uh, you gotta you gotta go back to Ottawa, which uh, sometimes isn't a lot of fun. You stop off in Kingston, and then we, uh, weirdly Peterborough, uh, where your former teammate is now wearing a peach sweater, which is gonna be. That's, I think it'll be very weird to see for you. Yeah, it's gonna look weird. But it'll be nice to see him. Yeah, well, see, because the, the thing is that you're you know it's friendships like it's it's difficult knowing that you play at the highest competitive level that this country has for your age group i mean this is this is as high as you can go before those that would turn pro but you're still like young guys where you form these relationships where you're like friends so when guys get traded for some of them that's like their best friend who's going out the front door that that is very difficult for you are you used to it or was that still tough when those trades went on i i'm i was kind of used to it we only really made one or two trades last year, but uh, I think it was, it definitely was tough because I'd say I'd spent a majority of my time with Beck because we had school together and we were just same, same OHL class, like all that sort of thing. But uh, seeing people leave is not always the best thing in the world. You kind of miss them, but you hope the best for them as well. And do you have any experience, you know, playing against guys that, that you played with before? Like, that's got to be a pretty weird kind of dynamic to see them out on the ice on the other team. I, yeah, I mean, we've had a bit of it with uh, Lavoie. And um, I had a little bit of it back in, in uh, minor hockey because I, I flipped teams halfway through. So I was just – I always would play all my buddies from home. And it was a lot of fun. Like, it was, it was a lot of smiles and stuff. But at the same time, you want to be serious and – <laughs> try to try to beat him but so I, so as a kid then you mentioned that too and as i said you know there's a lot of travel so the, what was the area that you would have represented when you're like 14 15 like what area are you representing at that point at that point i was representing elgin middlesex but 
a little bit before that, I was with Chatham. The you, psych- oh, you were with Ch- So, you know, I think that's interesting because, you know, like I came from a smaller town, so we had to play Delhi and Goderich and in and, and, and some of those areas. Would you yeah. have traveled to some of those towns? Yeah, because we, pl- we play uh, here on Perth, and that was kind of like Stratford, Goderich area. So there. So get- yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, there, Waterloo, Hamilton were kind of like the farthest. And then Windsor was the farthest south. Like I said, it's it's that process of, of you know, when you come from, because Ridgetown would be how big? How big is Ridgetown? We got one stoplight. Yeah. It's, it, <laughs> but it, it's a nice little town. I, I love it. It's, well, yeah. it, it's, it's, these are the great places to come from. And this is what makes, I think, hockey sometimes so interesting is, you know, guys come from everywhere. I mean, you've got a guy from Switzerland. Uh, on your team, you got you got the guys from from Denmark. I mean, you just it really don't know, and that's why I think it's so interesting. That, and the Steelheads work so hard on the personalities as well. I think that's why it always seems to work. Like year after year, even though the faces change, the 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 core of it is still about the humanity first. Now, when you go to play junior, I mean, everyone just wants to play in the O. I mean, that's that's the big deal. Did you feel in that process that they were also taking a look at sort of? who you were, what your school was like, uh, you know, what your, your family life was like, because I think that's a bigger part of, of, of kind of what happens here. I think so. I mean, when I got brought in for a tour, they asked, I think one of the first things was like, how are your school grades? And I was like, oh, they're, they're all right. I'm not, not, too, not too afraid to say them, but uh, uh, they were like that. They brought my whole family and they, we had conversations. They showed us around like, I'm I'm sure in that process they're trying to figure out who I was and not just only like if I was a good hockey player or not, but they definitely probably took some notes and tried to figure out if I was able to fit in with their their group. Did Crackers try to show off, like say that he could lift all kinds of weights and that <laughs> he was really popular? Did he tell the truth or no? He, he was just professional. I I, I give oh. him that. Yeah, he, he took he took the professional route when I was there. I, I mean, <laughs> He wasn't eating donuts or anything like that. Like you know, he was professional. He kept that a secret. He didn't. He probably didn't want me to know. I probably would have snagged a few pieces. But <laughs> now, 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 coming up here with with games, we were talking. You're going to Ottawa. You're going to Kingston. You got Peterborough. Bit of a tough weekend this this past week. Like, what's what are you guys looking at uh, changing your coming up in in this weekend? Uh, we just want to flip the switch. I mean, we haven't been winning too many games, but uh, we just had to believe that we can. And Ottawa's obviously a pretty good team. Peterborough's pretty good. Kingston, they're, they're, we're in, like, the same boat as them. They're pretty close and within the standings. So every game's important for us for the rest of the year. And uh, hopefully we can get the ball rolling with, with uh, this weekend. Well, yeah, it's important. I mean, I think this is actually is kind of a, an important uh, swing here because – you know, you're you're getting close enough where you know you really some of these wins are really gonna gonna matter. And let's face it, I mean, it's possible that you could play Peterborough in the in the first round of the playoffs. I mean, that, that is a, a reality depending on where you finish. And as I've said many 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 times on this show, uh, for some reason, when you guys play Peterborough, it's a freak show. The games are always circus like. I never know what's going on. They got it. It got to be like super high scoring or. I don't know, people with swords in the stands. I don't know what go. I have no idea what goes on. Do you have that feeling about Peterborough as well? Because it's always crazy. Yeah, it's just a battle. <laughs> oh, it really is. I mean, they're they're a tough team. Like they're they're big and strong and they got some really good players this year too. So it, it's a good matchup always. Yeah. And you know, when people say you go in the corners, they're physically they actually feel like corners. They're not rounded. They're all, I mean, you must find that. Like we were talking about stadiums and, and, and how things are just in general and new stadiums all look the same. Uh, not in Peterborough. No, it's that's an old barn right there. But. <laughs> well, it will be a very interesting and, and a tough one. Ottawa is, you know what you're getting with Ottawa. And, and you know, the, I, I think to put in the, the effort there, there's no reason you can't sort of run the board this weekend. I know you always think that way because your coach and general manager is one of the most competitive people I know. Uh, I mean, and he, it rubs off in you guys because you expect to win. And as I said, the playoffs aren't that far, but you still need to probably get some wins under your belt. And I'm sure that's what you're trying to do this week. Yeah, just play, play, uh, play with some urgency, desperation, all, all those sort of things. Just trying to get the keep us in a good spot. Well, you know, I just thought of something. Maybe, maybe just to spur on the fans and 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 the team. When you score, because I have a feeling you're going to score this week. Maybe it's a power play. I don't know. I'm just saying, throwing this out there. 
maybe a celebration that no one's seen, you know? So like maybe a dance move or something after a goal. Could you work that in? Does that sound fun? That sounds fun. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I usually keep it simple. I just started selling <laughs> now. I've kind of got more comfortable with it. I just go on the wall or something. But <laughs> Yeah, something doesn't tell me you you're, you don't seem like the kind of guy that would do the robot after you score a goal. You just don't <laughs> seem like that guy. <laughs> no, even if I tried, I don't think they'd know it was the robot. <laughs> I'm sure your dad would say something then, son, never again. Don't ever, <laughs> ever do that again. Uh, Xander, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, look, you're you're a great guy, and uh, we, we're really looking forward to the playoffs, and, and you got to get this week done first. But uh, a nice job here this morning. Uh, best of luck this weekend. We'll talk to you again sometime. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That is Xander Vecchia here this morning uh, talking with us on Meet the Steelheads. Uh, did a great job, and as you see, uh, they're, the, they're the greatest bunch of kids. They they really are. And hopefully you'll get out to uh, the Paramount and, you know, whenever those playoffs and should they finally secure a spot, you're, you're going to want to come down and support these guys. I mean, you know, Ridgetown, Ontario. I mean, you probably most people are like, what's that close to? Well, 